Hello guys, welcome to an, my another video on random forests. So random forests are a, uh, a group of decision trees. So the problem with decision trees is that they work great with the data used to create them, but they are not flexible when it comes to classifying the new samples. So uh, last time when we talked about decision trees, we we saw that in, when we are using a decision trees, we we fit all the features into our decision tree, and then we use and then we train our decision tree, and then we then make our decision tree to make predictions. But when we are using a random forest, like it's only a subset of our of our features is fed into a decision tree. It's fed into a into a single decision tree, and then another subset of our data set is fed into another into another decision tree. So you can find that there is a variety there is a variety in in random forests, which makes them better than, than decision trees. So random forests combine the simplicity of decision trees with flex flexibility and resulting in a vast improvement in, in accuracy. So let's take a look at this data set. So here we are supposed to, pay, to, to predict if a patient has heart disease based on, on, this feast, on these features. If the patient if the person has chest is chest pain, sorry, this should be good blood circulation, blocked arteries, weight, and that disease. So when we are make when we are when we are creating a random forest, let's consider these features. Let's have chest pain, blood circulation, blocked arteries, and weight. So to create a random forest, we random let's say let's assume that we randomly pick two two data points in our in our features. And then we use them to create a single decision tree. Let's say at first we use chest pain and then end, end with blood circulation. And then we use this to ask questions on our on our root node. Let's say chest pain. And then we then ask questions on our or then make questions, ask questions on our decision tree. So in this case, let's say if someone is chest pain, yes or no. And then we then go on to pick other two random data points in our in our in our data set. Let's say we pick blocked arteries and then weight. And then we ask ourselves a question. Let's say here we have the weight. And then we ask ourselves another question based on, on weight. And then let's say the next time is we are going to create another decision tree. In a random forest, but now we are we are going to randomly consider other two data points. Let's say this time we are going to consider blocked arteries and weight. So let's say we are going to ask questions on our root node based on weight, and then we then we then split our decision tree. So. And then let's say next time we pick two ran another two random data points in our in our in our data set. Let's say we are going to pick blood circulation and weight. And then let's say going to ask questions on our decision based three based on on blood circulation on good blood circulation. So let's say G B C, and then we then create our decision tree. So that's basically our random forest way. So we can keep on doing this up to a yeah, hundred decision trees. So as you can see that, as you can see this, that we have a variety of decision trees in our in our in our random forest, which makes them better than a single decision tree. So, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be ensemble. So in symbol in symbol learning in machine learning is a me method that makes predictions based on a number of different models. So let's say for example, random forest algorithm is a, is, is an example of in symbol learning as the model uses uses a bunch of decision trees, different decision trees to to make predictions. And then there is there there are two types of of ensemble learning, there is begging and then there is boosting. In begging, we train a bunch of individual models in a parallel way, 
And the, each module is trained by a random subset of the data set, as I as I've demonstrated in the previous, as I've demonstrated here. We're using a subset of our features to 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 train our to train our model. And then there is boosting. So boosting is training a bunch of of models in a sequence, and then each module learns from mistakes made by the previous model. So so in this case, we are going to be talking about the random forest, which is an example of, of a begging, of begging. And then boosting, we are going to, in the next video, I'm going to talk about other boosts. So yeah, I'm going, in this example, we are going to use scikit lane to predict if someone has a, has a heart disease based on a data set that I've downloaded on Kego. So the first thing is we are going to import our, our libraries, and then we are going to load our data set into pandas. Then we are going to print our data set. As you can see, we have age, sex, chest pain, and then we have things like ECG, and then the slope. And then, and then we are going to describe our data set, and then we are going to display our columns. And then we are going to, for our, for our features, we are going to take all the columns except the last one. The last one determines if someone is a heart disease, a yes or a no. So this is the target, the target variable. So our y, in our y variable, we are going to take the last column, which is the 13th column, which is our target variable. And then the next thing is, as you can see in our data set, we have these which are written, not a number. So these are missing values. So sometimes when we are collecting values, some values will be missing. So we need to deal with those missing values in order to get accurate predictions in our model. So what you can do is we, we can import imputer from the scikit lane library and then and then we can then create an instance of our of our imputer and then we pass in the argument missing values is not a number and then the strategy is mean so we are going to replace all the missing values with a mean and then we are going to replace them along the along the the columns and then we then fit our our we then fit our features into into the imputer and then in the year we are going to transform our values using the imputer and then the next thing is as you can see here we have different values some are, are ranging from 293 some are from 0 0.96 some are 1 some are 0 so for our model to make accurate predictions we need to scale our values from a scale of zero up to one so that our values if they are on the same are on the same are on the same page so that our model is not biased towards certain values so to do this we import the standard scale library from the escape scikit lane and then we then create an instance of the of the standard scale and then we fit we then fit our x values into the stand into the standard scale and then we make and then we scale our values. And then the next thing is we need to to train our algorithm. We need our we need the we need training data. So we are going to split split our variables. We are going to split our data set into a training set, a test set, and a test set. So our test set is going to be 20% of the whole data of the whole data set, and then the training set is going to be 80% of the whole data set is we want more examples for our algorithm to generalize well. And then we are going to use the test set to, to like to evaluate our, our algorithm on, on a data set, which our, our algorithm is not familiar with. So to, so to use random forest classifier from the scikit-learn library, we just import from sklearn.ensemble. So, as you can remember, I've said that Ensemble is a machine learning model that that uses different that combines different models in order to make predictions. So here we are we are importing from Ensemble, and then we are importing the random forest classifier, and then we are going to create an instance of the random forest classifier, and then we are going to, number of estimators or let's say the number of decision trees is going to be a hundred of them, and then we are going to fit our our model, and then we fit our training set and then the labels for our training set. And then here we're going to evaluate 
and then we are going to evaluate our model on on the test set the data set which is which the model is is not seen so as you can see our model is an accuracy of our model is an accuracy of our model is an accuracy of 100% so uh, sorry our model is an accuracy of 86% which is good and then and then here we are going to make prediction we are going to plot a confusion matrix so what a confusion matrix does is it's going to show us evaluate how our model predicted made predictions if our model made the right predictions or if our model made the wrong predictions so as you can see we have the false we have the true positive false positive we have the false negative we have the false negative and then the true negative and then the true negative so as you can see that our model classified 35 people correctly as having a heart disease and then five people wrongly classified as to as to having a heart disease when they don't and then three people were wrongly classified as not having a heart disease but these people ah uh, these three people were classified as not as not having a heart disease but these these people have a heart disease. And then 16 people who correctly classified as not having a heart disease. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like the video, please hit this the like button and the and the notification bell and the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this. So if you guys are not familiar with the concept of the decision tree, you can check out my previous my previous video. Also, if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.